I suck at website design. Okay, maybe I don't suck at it, but recently I've been working on a lot of design system projects and I've realized that my design and especially my website design has become quite systematized, which don't get me wrong, is great when you're thinking about design systems and how things are gonna scale when you're building them for large web projects. One thing I'm trying to improve at the moment is improving my art direction and pushing my designs past what is expected and the average. Also, I wanna win an award one day for my designs. Not because I think it'll make my portfolio look better or it'll actually make me a better designer. It's really more profound than that. Yeah, that's right. So then I can put it in my Instagram bio saying award-winning designer. A helpful thing I've learned in my career is having a process because when you get stuck somewhere along the way, you can look at the process almost like a map and know the step that comes next. So what you have to do at this step to get to the next step. So the way I'm planning on improving the visual and art direction of my projects is to really go through what my process is of designing and developing a website. So I'm going to be recording and documenting the process that I go through from start to finish designing and developing a website. This way I can go through each part of it and see what can be improved. Hey, maybe I'll come back next year as well and redo this video and see how the process has changed. So the rough overview that I have of my process at the moment is inspiration into lo-fi wireframes. Then I normally take those lo-fi wireframes and take them into Figma and do the UI design. Then after that, I normally review it and take it over to Webflow for development and then a bit of QA before launch. Quick disclaimer at this point about more the UX side of it and what isn't in this process, but normally would be. As what I'm gonna be working on right now is just a mock project and it'll just turn out to be one page website design where the focus is more improving the visual and art direction. There won't be heaps of UX involved. Normally for a real client project, there would be a lot more things involved. Some other things that I normally would involve if it's a larger project is competitor research, Research, user journeys, user interviews, understanding ideal customer, plus a whole heap of other UX activities. Let's get started at the idea. As this is a mock project, let's first establish who we're actually gonna be designing this website for. As it's 2024, of course, I'm gonna be booting up ChatGPT to give me ideas. I find with ChatGPT, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not that good. It is AI in the end. Sometimes you gotta give it a couple tries and narrow it down from there. Really, we're just looking to spark ideas here. We're not looking for ChatGPT to do all the work for us to get the cogs turning and help us and assist us really. Through some general business ideas that it gave me, I got the idea of something to do with tiny houses or tiny homes. I find something about them a bit funky and interesting. As well, previously I've done work in architect and construction industry with website design and I find it interesting the concepts you can pull from it. Okay, now we have a bit of a general business direction. We can move on from here. As this website is something that doesn't exist yet or have any branding attached to it, it gives us the ability to create something new. So I find it really helpful at this stage when we're collecting inspiration to cast that net really wide. And we wanna gather lots of inspiration from lots of different places. A quick list of websites I use consistently and find useful in projects when looking for inspiration is Awards, Site Inspire, Lapa Ninja, Dribble, a bit controversial, sometimes helpful, sometimes bloated, Visual Journey, and Old Faithful, where all these fail, good old Pinterest. So the two things I'm doing at this stage now is I like to get into Figma, and create some boards that I'm gonna be dragging images into and curating as I build the visual direction for this brand. As well in Pinterest, I'm gonna be creating a new board just for this project. As I find it really helpful in Pinterest as you start adding things and searching things to your board, the Pinterest algorithm is actually pretty helpful. And if you start adding items to the board and searching for something specific, when you come back, it'll be updated really quickly and it'll give you a lot more suggestions of things that are similar that can be added to that board. Something that I've realized already from looking at my process is this is a part of the process that I was overlooking and I was trying to get through pretty quickly so that I could get straight into Figma, into the UI stage and start flinging around pixels. But I'm realizing that as this project has no deadline and I can take as long as possible to make sure that I feel right about this, but it's really important to give this part of the project the proper time to set the art direction. Because if we can set a strong art direction now and some themes to go with it, we can look back at this later on in the process and see if we are still on track and if we are going in the right direction. By browsing through these websites and looking for inspiration and ideas and not having anything locked in yet, we're not really looking for anything in particular. It might just be something as small as a simple button that gives you inspiration or something much larger like an entire hero section that you can take inspiration from. We're still gathering a lot of ideas to really just build the direction that this brand is gonna go in. One thing I find useful to remember that I learned from one of my favorite books, Still Like an Artist, is we aren't just taking one or two things and copying those things exactly, but we're taking multiple ideas from lots of different places and we're combining multiple ideas together 
to ideally make something new. By browsing through these different websites, we can start to see some general themes and directions appearing on these boards. A quick overview of what I find most useful to use these websites for is Pinterest is really good at finding general design items. There's a little bit of everything there. Awards and Site Inspire are better at finding more designery websites and really good at finding interactions on websites. Lapa Ninja is really helpful for a collection of landing pages. Dribble is sometimes helpful at finding UI elements, but it's become quite bloated these days and it's not as useful as it used to be. And Visual Journal is a great collection when you're looking for more quality branding pieces of work. Once you've taken all the inspiration and you've curated them into the boards, and you can start to see some directions or themes that are starting to emerge. As we don't have a brand, we'll need to do some exploration of that quickly. Let's make a simple word mark and set up some typography, colors, and imagery at this stage to give us some direction. We'll go back to the mood boards and look at what typography we were leaning towards. And then from there, I'll go to some Type Foundry websites and choose something that feels right based off that. Color-wise, it seems that we have a defined palette starting to appear. I like to keep it fairly minimal with whites and blacks, and then one stronger brand color. One that's appearing is this green foresty color, which fits well into the art direction of one of the themes of being off the grid and a bit away from people. And this fits well with the living off the grid direction. I like to set up a basic type scale and color palette now in Figma. I think it's something I picked up from doing design systems, but I just find it helpful to have something as guidelines to work with and that we can keep refining as we go instead of having nothing and feeling very loose and all over the place and then trying to rein it back in and understand what the typography styles are at the end. Now that we have a simple brand set up as well as our mood boards clearly set out, this is a new step that I'm adding into my process, which is kind of a more art direction concept stage. What I'm planning on doing at this stage is taking all the mood boards and the inspiration work that I've done up to this point, taking all the elements and combining something to make a concept for what this website will be. It'll just be something small like the hero section of what this website might look like. The important thing is nothing is finalized. I'm just playing around with elements, like the things we just set up the base of, like type, the color, and the composition, and to see how it all really molds together. I think this is really helpful as this is a good place to really test out and solidify that the direction that I have in my mind with all these mood boards and all this inspiration we've connected, can this actually all combined together to make something that's strong. As really with gathering all this inspiration and different ideas from different places, it might mean something to me, but also it might mean something to else. So working with a client as well, this is a great stage to be able to present a concept to the client of this is the direction that we're taking the website in visually and having that signed off instead of working on building all these pages out and then realizing that that wasn't what the client was expecting either. And really it's a Great way to set the strong visual direction now. It can be the North Star of this project. As we're going through it, it will help at all the different stages. As you have something to look back on of, this is a concept work. It might not look identical, but at least we have something that we laid out at the start of this is the direction that we're intending this brand to go in. Also at this stage, I'm looking to establish and really flesh out if there is any themes that go along with this visual direction as pushing it further than just visuals so that it isn't just purely based around color, but has stronger foundations to lean on of the idea that we're playing into of maybe there's some theme that comes into it based off the living off the grid. And with that, is there a connection there of living off the grid with having things on the grid design-wise or off the grid design-wise as well? Now we have all these visuals and brand directions set, I can work on developing the wireframes. As this is only a simple landing page, as I said, we'll only be doing base wireframes to get an idea of what this page will look like. If this was a bigger pick, this stage would, with other activities like user research, site mapping, wire flows, and then taking that into wireframes. But it's really not needed for this project, which is based around improving the art direction. I like to do wireframes two different ways, depending on what kind of project it is. One of the ways that I like to do wireframes that I'll be doing in this video is starting on paper. I always find that it's easier to get the brain moving and make progress quickly at the start and not getting stuck on the pixel perfect detail. As paper, it's okay to be messy and move things around as you're just trying to get ideas out, get into a bit of flow with it. If you notice this little hand that keeps popping in trying to help, that's my, that's my new daughter. My wife and I welcomed our newest daughter 
earlier this year. That's why I haven't been uploading because that's been taking up all my time. So hopefully more regular videos coming up soon. As we're thinking about the experience of how the user will travel through the website and seeing if we can weave some themes into that as well. Sometimes depending on the fidelity of the wireframes, I use a Figma kit I've made to do page models, which is an even lower fidelity version of wireframes. Normally this is just gray squares of an indication of what should be part of that section of the website. I do like having paper somewhere always in the process as it doesn't matter if it's perfect and it really shouldn't be. It keeps the range of experimenting larger and at this stage not all the details are completely locked down yet anyways. Once I finish my lo-fi wireframes and I have a base user journey defined I normally just take a photo of this and move it into Figma to start thinking about it in the UI stage. Now we're at the UI stage, this is where we'll be fully moving into pixel flinging mode. At this stage, we'll be combining our concept and all the work we did in the mood boarding stage with our wireframe and user journey to put them together to make the UI designs. The UI stage has some really high highs, but also some really low lows. For the bad part, this stage can normally take quite a lot of time to get it right. And something painful that I've learned is that normally the first thing you make, even if you love it, it's not gonna be the best thing you make. It's okay to give it a solid crack and then decide it's wrong and have to update and iterate until it's in the right spot. It's very common at this stage to have the highs and lows of, wow, I really love designing. This is all looking so good, as well as the, oh, I suck at this and I'll never design anything good ever again. A good thing I've learned to keep in mind is you should expect this to happen. It's sometimes referred to as the dip. And if you are prepared for it, that's okay because then you can kind of know it's coming and understand you're in the middle of it. Some ways I find to help get through this stage, especially the messy middle where nothing seems to be working and all the great stuff you've said in the mood boarding when you're excited and you have this cool concept and now you try and actually flesh it out and none of the pieces are coming together is you just got to change it up a bit do some designing at the desk then move away instead of just trying to bang your head against the wall stuck at your desk trying to crack it just go for a walk change it up a little bit i find changing your perspective sometimes when you come back with fresh eyes really is helpful i kind of balance between two different ways of designing at this phase. One is very detailed when I'm just looking at one section, trying to crack exactly what the design of that section is gonna be. And then the other way is I'm more just bouncing up and down the page, looking at a bit here and then a bit there and getting a better feel of what the overall direction of this website will be. I find it really helpful in Figma to be able to have it set up so you can refer back to that concept and all that mood ball work we've done. So we're keeping them in mind to make sure that we're not swaying off the path too much, but we are actually building on and improving that. This isn't exactly the way that I normally design in Figma, especially with design systems, I'm more heavily using auto layout. But as I said at the start, I'm trying to improve my visual design and pushing things past the expected. I find when I use auto layout too early in the UI stage that it limits what might be a great idea or like exploration and gets me thinking already too much about the box model and how this will be built. Of course, I want all my designs to be possible within development and actually something that's feasible. So it is important to keep concepts like the box model in mind and actually how will this possibly be developed when you hand it over or if you're building it, how you're actually gonna build it. I just find there's a middle ground somewhere that I'm trying to reach between what's possible to actually get built in development with interaction and interesting layout without going too far into a crazy website that isn't feasible, which isn't usable or has a good user experience at all. I'm trying to find that middle ground of having a really great experience, but also having a bit of a unique factor in there somewhere. As I'll be taking this from Figma to Webflow, it's much easier for me to interpret my own designs instead of trying to give it to some poor developer who's trying to interpret this crazy mess of work that I've put together. At this stage as well, I also like to try to keep in mind interaction and animations that could be used within the website. I'm trying to think of what feels right, and more importantly, what's actually gonna elevate the experience for the user, not just chucking in fancy flashy animations for the sake of it. For this project, as I'm building myself, I find it quite easy to translate it across different breakpoints. So within Figma, I'll be starting with the desktop layout, and then I'll be creating the mobile version of it as well, and only really creating a tablet version if there's a bit of a strange layout that I'm not sure how it will translate. But because I'm building this all myself, I kind of have a good idea of how it will translate already. So I'll just be doing a desktop and a mobile version. Once I've created the full desktop and mobile page designs, I find it important to give it some time to bake. 
This can look in different ways, but something that I've taken from when I used to do logo design is kind of stand up and look at it from different angles. Really try to change the perspective. This is tricky, but giving yourself some honest reflection of it. It's important to be self-critical and review the work as you go. So if you can separate your feelings from it and look at it at the lens of you're trying to improve this work and really push it to the best it can be. Some questions I like to ask myself is what's working, what isn't working, what might be an issue or confusion for the user. And also a really good one is what could be taken away. A great bit of advice in design is not trying to add more things, but when can you get to the point that you've removed everything you can? Can you remove something else or are you at the point of nothing else can be removed? A great quote I really like is, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will change. So it's really important to take the time to review it and see how you can actually improve it. This is great if you're part of a team or a community where you can get your work reviewed and you can get different opinions and feedback. It is scary to put yourself out there and get that kind of feedback. It will make you better at design and the work will be much stronger. This is sometimes tricky to do, but you need to do it yourself, especially if you're a freelancer working for yourself. As I've said, this project is about trying to improve my visual direction of projects. So being very critical of my work is something that I do need to spend more time on and looking at it and seeing what ways can actually be improved. Once you've reached the point of reviewing it, improving and iterating it, and you're happy with it, now that I've reached that point, I'm gonna start getting it ready for development. As I was getting it ready for dev, I couldn't help myself, but I'd go through and apply auto layout to different sections, as it will actually help me translate it more easily now that I'm looking at it in being developed. So checking what the type styles are, using it and making sure they're all consistent, check the colors, and they're still true to what I had them listed as, as well as just a general cleanup for dev. It's still fairly loose as I can interpret most of it, but just going through and looking at the spacing, the padding of each sections, and it's much faster to apply the auto layout now and think about box model, so that when I get into the development, it's already semi-fresh in my brain. Now that I've finished the design of it, I can move it into development. There's lots of different options for developing a website from writing code to website builders. My favorite has been and still is for the last few years now is using Webflow. Being a big advocate of Webflow for many years, I find it the great middle ground of it's not writing code from scratch, it's not a locked in website builder, but it's somewhere in the middle of you have all the power of writing code and it's very fast to develop with, with the tool that they've made. I'll be using a framework for building this as I find it faster, as well as it keeps the naming clean. There are many good options for frameworks within Webflow, but the one I'll be using is Client First by FinSuite, purely as it's the one I've had the most experience with so far. So it'll be the quickest one for me to implement. It's been a little while since doing a site build with Client First, so I just need to refresh my knowledge a little bit. The great thing that FinSuite has is they have multiple tutorials on YouTube, as well as long and detailed guides of understanding how the framework works and how to implement it. It does seem like a lot to get your head around at first, but once you work out the pattern of building things, it does empower you to work much faster, as well as be consistent in that class naming. First thing I like to do, similar to Figma, is set up that foundational level. So set up the colors, typography first, so that I know that it will be consistent as I build this out. After that, I like to get the assets sorted as much as I can, logos, images. It's important to convert these to WebP or something friendly so they load faster on Google. Export all my images as PNGs and my icons as SVGs. And then I just use a converter online to change them to WebP. Now that I have that all uploaded, I got to build it now. It took me a little bit, just had to do a little bit of reading here to re-familiarize myself with how to build this, but I managed to get this here section out. Now I'm just gonna go through a cycle of checking the design in Figma, looking at the different properties of how I built it, and then translating that into development. As well as there's a bit of adjustment as you go of things you realize that were great in design, but actually are not good development ideas. But also a great benefit of being able to do the design and development is this is another great stage that you can keep iterating and that point I'm making about trying to improve the visual direction is that that can always get improved on. So instead of handing this over and being finished there, I can keep pushing things further now and trying to refine it and craft it to be a better final product. First off, I'm gonna build this whole page in desktop statically, and then I'll go through each section and make sure that it's responsive. So I go through the tablet and the mobile versions across different rate points and update it so that it's responsive and it looks great and it's a very friendly user experience across all desktop 
to mobile breakpoint. After that, I'll go through and add interactions and animations to improve this experience. It's also important here to refer back to the original concept, not just the site design, as there might be things that have fallen off along the way that were really great things in that early stage that have just been missed along the process. As I'm realizing, looking at my process here, this is a continually evolving thing. It isn't something that's just finished at the design stage, but I keep crafting it at each stage to make it better and better. After doing all the static work, begin looking at animation interaction. This can be something that can really push the work to stand out and add some unique flair and make it a memorable website. Or it can just be really tacky because you're too focused on adding animation for the sake of it. As I'm finding looking at this process overall, it's so important setting that foundation right at the start of that strong concept as this really helps guide and push the project forward. The different ways I like to think about animations is the levels of micro interactions, these are things like buttons and item hovers, small things that add a little bit of delight for the user and just improves the user experience. They know what's clickable and helps guide them through the website. And there's large items, this could be scrolling animations when you reach a section, what's meant to happen, and does it help by adding clarity and hierarchy? And then just those big animations, like full page animations, these can be something to push the brand through or adding a little bit of extra details that help set the brand apart or just be a really memorable moment for the user. So there it is. That's the whole process that I go through when designing and developing a website. Now, I guess the question is, will I be winning any awards and did I get any better going through this process? Well, yes and no. Let's talk about it a little bit. So on one side, no, I don't think doing one project in this way and really going through the whole process has completely improved my visual and art direction ability. And I've leveled up so much that every project I create now is gonna be an award-winning project. But it's not all bad. That's one side of it. The other side though, now that I've taken the time to actually go through this step-by-step step and actually really overanalyze this whole process that I go through and really thought about each little stage and what's involved in that, what the outcomes are and how I run through it. I've definitely found some areas that I can improve in, especially that early inspiration and that concept stage. When I really sat down to go through it, I was skimming over that a bit too quick and going through it now and really thinking about it and analyzing what the purpose of each section is has showed me that I need to spend more time at that stage because it's so important that setting that visual direction right at the start follows all the way through the project and really is the guiding light of the project. Let me know if you found it helpful below or if there's other videos that you want me to create things on in this kind of area. And I don't think I'm gonna win an award off this project, but I think I will in the future somewhere. Hey, and while you're here, check out another video.